This is how we can create ghostly light with a little bit of Lightroom editing. To follow along, grab the RAW file from the link in the description of this video and now let's begin. To create this ghostly light effect, it's very important to have the right base RAW image. In this case, we have a foggy forest scene, which is great because we can use the shadows of the foreground in the forest and make those shadows really, really dark against some bluish colored highlights in the background. Now to start this off, I want to change the profile to Adobe Standard just to lessen the contrast a little bit and less contrast really, really helps to get this effect right. Next up, I want to get the base exposure right before adjusting the white balance. So what I mean by that is I want to make this whole shot a lot darker. I'm going to start this by dropping the exposure a lot. I'm paying close attention to the histogram because we don't want to underexpose. Right at this point, this looks quite good with the dark foreground and the bright highlights in the back. Still, I think we can make the shadows just a little bit darker. So let's bring down the shadows. Again, watching the histogram closely as I drop the shadow slider. And you can already see this indicator showing some clipping in the darker areas. So I want to kind of prevent that. And for that, I'm going to bring up the blacks. And bringing up the blacks has another benefit because by bringing up the blacks, we are kind of lessening the contrast again. I don't know if you can see it, but again, this just helps creating a very soft look as we reduce the contrast in the darkest parts of the image. Okay, at this point, I also want to bring down the highlights. Just around here, I think is a good spot. Now you notice some very bright spots right here and right there. These will now become overexposed as I do the next adjustments. I'm going to erase them later on in the editing process. So don't worry if these are getting overexposed. So for the next step, I want to reintroduce contrast in the brightest areas by bringing up the whites. So somewhere around here looks pretty good to me. And by bringing up the whites, we kind of create some silhouettes right there in the back with the darker trees blocking the light from behind them, which in my opinion also helps quite tremendously with that ghostly light effect. So exposure wise, that looks pretty good so far. What I want to do as well is I want to bring down the contrast slider just a notch again to make this whole image a little softer. And then I think we can bring up the texture. I'm doing this to tickle out a little more detail from smaller things like leaves and those pebbles in the foreground. Now, at the same time, I'm going to bring down the clarity and I'm kind of heavily bringing down the dehaze. Now, negative clarity and negative dehaze are a great help for the soft look I'm aiming for. And it just adds a little more atmosphere to this image. At this point, the base image looks great. Now I want to work on the colors a little bit with the white balance. I'm doing this at this point of the editing process since we now have set up the base exposure, which means we have a better idea of how this image is going to look like. Now with the white balance, what I want to do for the ghostly light, I want to make this whole scene colder. So I'm going to bring down the temperature. Let's drop it heavily. I think right about here looks nice. And as we drop the temperature, you can see we're adding this bluish tint to the highlights in the distance. While we still have some green tones right here in the foreground in the dark areas. We can work on this a little more by bringing down the tint, introducing even more green tones, just like this. Now this is a very, very heavy color adjustment, but that is exactly the look we're aiming for with this ghostly light effect. So at this point, I don't want to touch the vibrance or saturation. I think the colors look quite good. I want to target them more specifically later on. But first I want to change things locally. That means we're going to make use of masks. And the first thing I want to do is I want to create a radial gradient, make it nice and big like this. I'm going to rotate it to fit the light's direction and I'm going to place it right on top here. Maybe stretch it a little more. And what I want to do inside here, I want to add a little bit of brightness to this area. So let's bring up the exposure. Let's also bring up the blacks, 
which adds a very cool glow effect. And to make this glow effect stronger, I'm going to bring down the dehaze. Wonderful. Now you can already see the overexposure is kicking in in this bright spot. But as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to remove it later on. Next up, let's create another radial gradient. And I want to cover this path right here in the center. What I want to do in here is I want to bring up the exposure. Just giving this path a little highlights right there. I'm also going to bring up the whites. And we can also bring up the clarity to add structure to this path. So that's looking great. I want to enhance it a little more using another radial gradient covering this whole path like this. And in here, let's bring up the whites gently. Okay, I think that looks great. Then I'm using a linear gradient covering the very near foreground like this. And what I want to do in here is I want to bring down the exposure. I'm not going too crazy since I don't want to underexpose, but to make it even darker, I can bring down the whites and I can bring down the highlights. And by doing this, we are creating some kind of vignetting effect, leading the viewer's eye more towards the center of the image. Now I might have gone a little bit too far with the white, so let's bring them up slightly, just right about here. Okay, and that's it for the masking adjustments. Let's take a look at before. Here's the image after the basic adjustments, and here's the image with the masks applied. You can see the image has a lot more depth to it, and I guess we can also compare it to the original RAW file, and as you can see, the colors do look much cooler, and overall, the image has a way more creepy vibe to it. I love it. So next up, we can do a little bit of color grading. Therefore, let's jump into the color mixer tab and I wanna work on the hue first. Right now at the moment, these highlights in the distance have a way too strong Zion color cast. So I wanna fix that by bringing up the aqua hue a little bit, turning them more blue. Okay, then let's head over into the saturation tab and I wanna bring up the green saturation as well as the aqua saturation. Perfect. That's it for the color mixer. We can also apply a little bit of split toning in the color grading tab. Let's start with the highlights. Usually for my images, since I shoot a lot of sunsets and sunrises, I'm going with warm color tones for the highlights. But in this case, the highlights of this image are more on the blue side. So we don't want it warm color tones, but we want to add a cold color tone to the highlights. So let's set up the hue somewhere around here in the Zion color range and bring up the saturation. I'm not going too crazy, just a little bit like this. And I also want to work on the midtones. And instead of adding more cold color tones to this image, I want to emphasize those green color tones. So let's set up the hue to something in the green color range right about here. And again, let's bring up the saturation a bit. Okay, and these green and bluish color tones work very, very nicely together, as you can see. Now we can do even more color grading in the calibration tab. Yeah, what I want to do is to just bring up the saturation of all those three color tones. Let's raise green and let's raise blue. For the blue primary hue, I'm also going to drop it slightly just because I like this effect, what this does to the colors of this image. Okay, looks good so far. What we can do as well is, of course, a little bit of sharpening in the details tab. So let's do that. I'm going to drop the radius. I'm increasing the details. I'm holding down the Alt key while adjusting the masking slider to nicely control the areas which get sharpened. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Wonderful. All that's left to do is to clean up the image a little bit. That means I'm going to get rid of a few sensor spots like this and I'm going to remove these overexposed areas. I'm not going to do this in Lightroom. Instead, I want to use Photoshop for that real quick. So right click on the image, go to edit in, and choose Photoshop. So right away, let's create a backup layer by hitting Ctrl J. And I'm going to zoom in. And now let's grab the spot healing brush. And let's see if we can just paint over it like this. That has worked. Now for this bright spot up there, I want to use the remove tool and see if this can fix that bright spot. 
It can not. Let's paint over it one more time, give it another try. It does look a little bit better. Let's give it a third try. I think that's good enough. Now let's see. I'm not sure if I actually want to get rid of this bright spot here at the moment, but I want to give it a try. Again, the remove tool worked quite well in here. Looks quite a bit better, I think. And I want to get rid of this very dark leaf right here. That looks good so far. Now, one thing that is bothering me at this point are the trees on the right side, which are kind of leaning heavily towards the left. I want to create another backup layer by hitting Ctrl J. Then I'm hitting Ctrl T to bring up the transformation. Now I'm right clicking in the image and I'm choosing distort. With the distort function, what I want to do, I'm picking up the upper right point and I'm going to drag it further to the right side. And what this does is it will distort the image and this way I can kind of get rid of these leaning trees. As you can see, I can nicely straighten them. I can do the same on the other side since now this tree is a little bit leaning towards the right side, so we want to fix that as well. And just like this, we have applied a very nice transformation on this image. Wonderful. And at this point, we are done with the editing. I hope you like this ghostly light effect. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Also, let me know if you have any questions about the editing. And thank you so much for watching this video.